welcome to this Kerker lab, together with plants and other things. And no, you're not having a deja vu moment. <laughs> if you're starting to see something, well, no, hang on a second, I've already seen this video. That is not the case. This is, yes, my van der Vietnamica. And yes, we've had a care collab about this orchid previously, together with plants and other things. But this is not what this video is about, so stick around. Don't go away, you did not click an old video. If it's your first time here, welcome, thank you so much. I appreciate it and I hope that the information that I provide in my video regarding the Chrysnetia green light or Vanda green light is going to be of use and helpful to you. But plants and other things and I today will be discussing Vanda green light. However, that is the seed parent, Vanda Vietnamica. And this is the pollen parent, Vanda falcata, Neophenicia falcata. So I just wanted to put that out there. I have the parents. Now let's get to the subject, the baby. This is the offspring of the Vanda Vietnamica and the Vanda falcata, as I would like to prefer to call it, Chrysnetia green light. However, if Christensonia Vietnamica has changed to Vanda Vietnamica and Neophenicia Falcata has changed to Vanda Falcata, then this is a Vanda green light. I wish they would have just left it with Christensia. It just sounds so much more elegant. My preferences aside, having seen the parents, you have the Vanda Vietnamica, which is a warm to hot grower. And the pollen parent, the Vanda Falcata, is a cool to warm growing orchid making then my Chrysnetia Vanda Green Light a cool to intermediate grower, you would think. And that is exactly how I try to take care of her. And for that reason, mine permanently lives in the blooming alley, more to the west side of the space where it gets direct apple sun through the trellising for about eight months of the year. The other remaining four months, it gets carried in and out <laughs> of the dining room, especially if the night temperatures drop below 10 degrees Celsius considering that I leave my Neo, the parent, outdoors all year round, I allow myself the liberty to keep my green light outdoors longer than other warm growing orchids in my Lekka and self-watering setup, which this one is, even though I have terrarium grit on the top just to see about protecting the dry top layer that I have. But because the seed parent being the warm to hot growing Vietnamica, it is a more predominant in the cross. I don't let the green light live outdoor all year round like I would my Vanda falcata. I got it as quite a good size orchid, but it took two years to get it to bloom. Last year was its first blooming after upping its light levels by situating it on the east side of my patio, which is a much hotter space and a much brighter space for about six to seven hours per day. It did the trick and bloomed. So this year I thought, well, it did the trick, it bloomed, now I've got it to get to blooming and I put it back onto my south side, more to the west corner of my blooming alley, where it is more shaded during this time of year because of the angle of the sun, it's not getting any direct sun and I haven't seen a spike yet. I am not even saying it's going to bloom. It met, this spike here is from last year and I see nothing for this year, which is a shame. I miscalculated. I might have to, for next year, keep it on the east side whenever the temperatures permit for it to be out there all year round. So instead of getting mine to spike this year, it is growing very, very well. <laughs> That's a positive. Now, don't get me wrong when the images come regarding how I have it located this year. It always looks a little bit darker than it actually is, but that is due to my bad photography skills. The light is much brighter, even on the west side, south side of my blooming alley there. And the photobomb of the Renanthra citrina just adds to my photography skills or the lack thereof. And they are not to be mistaken for the green light blooms, which I will also be showing you images of my last year blooming. But I wanted to make sure that even though you see shade, and it looks dark, it is not. It is much, much brighter. And also keep in mind that the trellising, based on the angle of the sun from about April through to June, it gets direct sun also for about seven hours because the sun is lower in the sky, it's just not as harsh. So not to mistake the citrina blooms for my green light blooms, <laughs> the blooms of the green light actually resemble 
the Neo parent, which is really, really cute. They're just a little bit larger and they feel a lot more substantial to the touch. The hints of green stem from the Vietnamica parent and the charming spur just elongates thanks to the Falcata parent. I detected a slight fragrance last year, but it wasn't obvious. I was hoping, really hoping to get it to bloom this year to see if the fragrance would be any stronger. I guess I won't be able to tell you until next year, unless plants and other things will tell you how strong the fragrance is. But last year you could say, yeah, you can go and you can detect a fragrance late afternoon. But if you didn't know there was a Falcata parent in there, you would probably think it's not fragrance at all. That's how faint it was for me. I fertilized my green light at 160 parts per million at every watering, including the winter because this one doesn't stop growing, even though it may slow down a little bit in winter, but it doesn't stop growing. So by default, in the warmer months of the year, from May through September, the watering frequency increases to about two times per week and several mistings per day with plain RO water to help with the humidity around the orchid. And prior to refilling the reservoir, I flush the pot abundantly with plain RO water. And the misting is something I have to do to counteract the lack of humidity I have in my climate. My annual temperatures range from five degrees Celsius to 30 plus degrees Celsius with more dry winds than a tumble dryer. <laughs> Most days from May through September, I average 30% humidity. So misting for my orchid is fundamental. Now she hasn't seen direct light since probably the mid of May when the angle of the sun was too high in the sky to hit where she lives. I am not concerned that she is now in direct sun. The leaves aren't heating up, but I do wish that I would have thought to put her on the east side. I was just getting too confident. I thought I had cracked the bush for the first time blooming, and after that, all she needs is a lot of light in order to bloom again. But clearly, that was a mistake. If she proves me wrong later on, in a couple of months, then that's great. But normally I would be expecting to see some kind of a bump emerge in her nodes this time around. So if that is the bloom spike right there from last year, then all these growths up here, the next spike that should come out would be around this level here, these two mature leaves. But there's nothing there. I missed the mark, unfortunately, this year, which is a shame, but we are here because thanks to plants and other things, we have blooms to see. The link to his video is in my description below. The fact that you're here looking at another green orchid in a pot, be it that it's growing well or not, I appreciate it very much. Let me just turn her around and just show you that she is really, really vigorous. You see there's a fan right there maturing nicely and she's branching several fans out in the middle of the main stem as well and all the roots are going diving straight into the pot. I do have some dangling out over the edge, but they are minute. Normally it's the other way around that I have more outside with these vendacious orchids than inside. And I'm just happy to get one or two roots in, but not this one, especially for my 30% humidity, which is the average of my ambient air humidity. This setup is working really, really well with the occasional misting just to up the microclimate around her. The yellowing of the leaves, I'm not concerned. They are yellowing from the outside in. That's not a worry. One might think maybe give her a little bit more fertilizer. I'm reluctant to do that. I would like to make sure that she grows well and I don't want to have any fertilizer accumulation on top of the pot. So 160 parts per million. And again, in the winter, that would be maybe once every 10 days, more abundant flushing because I don't leave her in the pot stale for 10 days. And in the summer, that pretty much triples. The fertilizing increases just because I'm doing it two times a week now. I would have thought she has plenty of fertilizer. I by now would have thought she had plenty of light. If you have this orchid and she is not blooming for you, take it from me. Two years, no blooms, one year, radical light. And I'm not saying it was direct sun, it was behind a curtain, but the brightest light I could probably offer her. I don't want to burn the leaves. And now I have her in dappled sun and bright shade and she is not spiking. So just take that into consideration if, for example, yours is doing well but not blooming. Higher light. 
I've had absolutely no pest issues with this orchid, apart from the fact that I got the light levels wrong this year, she is a trooper. I would highly recommend it if this is something that you have space for. She's medium, compact. She is not a space hog at all. If there's a thought that I didn't cover and you would like me to address it in a little bit more detail, please leave me that thought in the comment section below. I also want to remind you about the blooms yonder on the other side of the pond. I'm here in Southern Spain. We can head over to the USA, to the Pacific Northwest <laughs> to see some blooms. I appreciate your time here with me, with my Vanda green light. Thank you so very, very much for watching. Thank you plants and other things for reaching out to me that yours is in bloom, that we could get this care collab organized. Have yourselves a wonderful day, everybody. Please stay safe and take care. Bye. Bye.